We are absolutely in love with our little bees, and you should be in love with bees too, and all the pollinators, really. 35% of the world's food crops depend on animal pollinators. Now that isn't just bees. We're partial to them because of the honey, of course. But you want to consider all the pollinators when you're thinking about impacts on, on the planet. It might be bees, butterflies, moths, uh, birds, bats, and lots of other insects. Clear back in episode two, we talked about pollinators extensively and specifically the Oregon Bee Project. I recommend you check it out. Today, however, I want to talk about a unique way of harvesting honey. Here we go. Welcome to STEM Punks. Welcome to STEM Punks. Welcome to STEM Punks. STEM Punks is a bi-monthly podcast intended to bring science, technology, engineering, and pop straight to your ears from our STEM Punk studio. Hang on, we'll take you for a ride that includes a whole lot of fun and a little bit of education on the side. Stay tuned. Nice to be in orbit. <laughs> Welcome to the STEM Punks podcast. My name is Joe Garut, and I will be your host. And with me, as always, is my buddy, STEM Buck. Hello, Stembot. Hello, Joe. Stembot, as you know, I have been really busy out at the hive lately. Yes, I do. I have been waiting for you to get digital scales and other devices so that I can help you monitor the bees. I'd like that, too. For now, will you please roll that tape of the flow hive? Okie dokie. Now, this is why I wanted to do the episode. This is a flow hive. These are plastic cells that the bees have filled in with wax in those little gaps. You'll see here that they have taken the entire honeycomb of plastic, made it their own, and built up wax not only in those grooves, but along the top to cap off the cells and fill it with honey. As you'll see here in a little bit when I harvest it, those plastic honeycombs really make it easy to just drain the hive without taking it apart and disrupting the bees. So we've been waiting to do this for four years, and uh, what we do with the flow hive is we Take this little section right here out at the top. The reason we've been waiting four years is due to hive failures, but that also is in episode two. Just a little puff of smoke in here to kind of send them back away from this opening. That's it, girls, come on. The reason I'm calling them girls is because all of the worker bees are female. There we go, and then we get them going elsewhere in the hive, so they're not gonna be right here by where we're working. Put this in here. So what it does is it shifts the cells inside here and the honeycomb cracks like this and then the honey runs in and through that new S-curve channel that comes down into the bottom there. And there it is. There is just about nothing better than having fresh honey right on your finger right out of the hive. And you know, and the beauty of it is that the bees can continue with their normal routine. Uh, other than that little bit of smoke I put in the back, I, I didn't really affect what they were doing on the inside of the hive. And as you can see here, they go very quickly back into the cells to start the process over again. Now, one really interesting thing that I saw was right here. Notice that the bees are crawling in on their knees. I thought that was fascinating. The incorporation of technology into the harvesting of honey is just a fascinating thing. And in so many ways, it's so good for both the beekeeper and the bees in this case. They have so much less work to do to recreate the honeycombs. All they have to do is clean them out, start making more honey, and then cap them off one more time. So really, they get to focus their energy on honey making rather than comb building. And while we're focusing on the bee, uh, Stembot, can you set up that clip that we had? Just rewind it to the beginning, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about the anatomy of a bee. Okie dokie. Okay, that's great, buddy. Now, hold it right there. Yeah, right there. Now, focus on that spot right in the middle. Here? Perfect. Point that out. Okay. What we're looking at there is the ocellus, the central ocellus, out of a bee's three ocelli that they have in the center of their head. Now that's different than the compound eyes that they have on the side of their head. 
The ocelli are simple eyes, much like yours and mine, where they just have a single lens. The bees use this to navigate with the sun. The compound eyes will see a myriad of colors clear into the ultraviolet range that we cannot see, and that lets them get more specific. We're not going to go too far down this path, but I just wanted to point it out because the girls, they just don't stay still long enough for us to get a good look at them sometimes, and I wanted you to see that. Okay, moving on. There are other parts of the bee that I would love to show you, but I think we need to... Oh, wait, hang on right there. Yep, right there. Now, Stembot, highlight that little sack on the back of her leg. Got it. Okay. That right there is a pollen sack. They're like a little saddlebag that the bee actually draws the pollen off of the hairs on, on its body and pulls it into those sacks to bring pollen back to the hive while it's gathering nectar. Okay, let's move on. One last thing that I want to show you is on the inside of her front leg, right there. Stembot, will you please zoom in on her front leg? Sure. What I want you to see there is there is a little spur that's coming off of the tibia of that little bee. Just inside there where you can't really see there's also a little semicircle in what we would consider the knee joint. What you'll see here in a moment is that leg go up and over her antenna to clean the antenna off. When she flexes her leg the semicircle closes, that little spur wraps around and she encompasses the entire antenna to keep it clean. Now I could do an entire episode on all of the aspects of a bee antenna. But I just want to give you a quick little look uh, in slow motion of what this looks like, this cleaning process. Stembot, can you run that in slow motion, please? Okay. Now notice how her antenna bends down, the leg comes over, and she wraps around it to clean it. It's not overstating it to say that that antenna acts as nose, fingers, ears, taste buds, protractor, hygrometer, thermometer, speedometer, direction finder, CO2 sensor. Uh, it, it's an amazing part of a bee. And these creatures are amazing. So I hope that you have learned a little something here and uh, can understand that not only is uh, technology a part of uh, harvesting honey and a, a new way that stem is tied into a very old, centuries old system of nature but that the creatures themselves really are the star of the show, and we have to do our part to protect them. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Stem Punks podcast. I think it's time we say goodbye, Stembot. Goodbye, Stembot. The Stem Punks podcast is sponsored by Cottywample Creative. A Cottywample is a purposeful journey towards a vague destination, not at all like the bees. They know right where they're going. Check them out at cottywamplecreative.com. We also want to thank our sponsors on Patreon. If you like the show and can do a dollar a month, check out our link in the show notes for our Patreon page. Thank you all for listening. 